I, re I left this, you know, like everything is really, really difficult. Uh, come in closer, you know, don't be shy. Uh, wh what's really interesting about this is that everything is so strict now as far as meat is concerned, and which is a really good thing because it means that, like this animal, I can go back to its DNA, to its father and its mother and find out where it actually came from, right? So they hear, uh, sorry for moving out. Sorry for moving in and out here. Right. And the reason it's in plastic is because it's deboned outside. Like we hang it, it's killed, and then it's hung in a humidity room, and then it's deboned outside. And because this half this is going to Singapore, right? So this is my pride and joy. It's a beef. Yeah, this is a Toby beef or Aru, right? This one because I want you to play with it. Yeah. And the thing about reason I left it here in the pack is because I want you to smell it. And you can almost smell the milk off it, right? I'll just put that in here. And we have three pieces of beef that are very interesting, yeah? And I just want to show you, oops, show you the fat content in it, yeah? Thanks, sorry about that, Stuart, yeah? Or no, Stuart's brother, it's not Stuart's brother. Yeah? Right. So you just cut it down. Right. So again, the linen. Right. There. Now smell it, huh? So, can you smell the milk almost off it? Yeah? Really, can smell the cream, we can smell off it. But look at this, this is the most amazing part. This is like a Eru beef is what we're calling it. Right, and this is the sirloin, right? And what's really interesting about this, quickly, we'll just, uh, we'll, could you just put on the grill for me quickly, and we'll just do a quick, quick saute, yeah? So you, I'm going to do this, but you, you can play with this one, because it's good. But see the difference to so when you're touching meat compared to fish, you know? Right, so put this out of the way, just tidy up. Because it's always important to be, yeah, all the time clean, you know? My mother used to whack me if I didn't clean up properly, yeah? So here, like the sirloin, if you cut it down, and when you're cutting it, you cut it at a clean, yeah? and you all use beef at home. Yeah? Right? Now, but look at this. Look at the fat content of this, yeah? Like, it's really beautiful, right? So compared to a different, a different sirloin, like this was fed on Guinness and massaged with poaching, and so it was fed on its mother's milk for the first seven months. And the most, one of the, for me, one of the most important things is that the end of its life is that when it was being killed, it, that there was no tension, you know, that it wasn't stressed. So it was killed without it even knowing it. So it put its hand on its heart, it felt it, and when it was shot, you know, I mean, our responsibility is that we breed the animal for eating. Our responsibility is to make sure that the end of its life is, is worked out well, you know. But what's really good about this is this is the sirloin and this is the rump, right? Now look at this and feel, this is how you can find out whether a piece of meat, like just say you go to your butcher's and you want to know whether your meat is fresh or whether it's, it's tender or not. You put your finger through it and you can feel it. You know? So if you just here quickly, you touch this bun and then touch this one. Yeah. You know? yeah. No, no, touch it, it's like, you know, feel it. Yeah. Don't be afraid of it. In there, this part here. Yeah. Because otherwise you're going too much in there. Yeah. You always pick just one part of fish. Just touch it, don't be afraid of it. Yeah. And then you can feel that the difference because one is slightly a bit more um, pressure than the other. Are you using the same board as the fish? No, not the same board at all as the fish. Same color, but not the same board. Sorry about that. What we try to do is make sure because obviously if I use the same board as the fish, it would smell and that'd be really stupid of me. And I wouldn't be a professional, you know, I'd be pro amateur. But thanks, and it's important that you don't use the same board as the fish, you know? So you use it, so turn it around you know, different aspects of it. Right, so what we're going to do is that, and then this, this part here, you know, it's from the flank, and see the fat content is really high in it. So you come down, and then you, you know, you, so again, with, with, the fish, with the meat you have to know where all the parts is, where the sinew is, and you're cutting down. But you see, what's interesting about it is the marbling, look. And what we're going to do with these two pieces, we're going to cook, cook these two pieces now in a second, and we're going to cook a piece of this. So, and the whole idea is that you taste each piece. Will you taste? Oh. 
Well, yeah, it's a, yes, it is a very high fat content, but, that was, but I wanted that. Because the thing is that it, it's flavor, yeah. It's flavor. Like, so you see when we cook it, that the fat will be go into it, you know, and you won't really see it, you know, but it's melting into it. I mean, the most important thing is that if you eat, like you won't eat a big steak like this, it's too much. You know what I mean? Where a normal piece of meat, for me, it's too much anyway. Like this is about uh, uh, 160 grams, you know, so it's a lot, a lot of meat to consume, all right? Now, and the same with this, is that, you know, you can cut it down, but look at the difference, like the flank, you know? And the same, we feel it and it's really tender. So you can sue, you know, like sashimi. Like sashimi basically is a cut of fish. So a cut of meat, what did I say? Did I say fish? Silly me. Meat, yeah? So a cut of meat, and then, you know, like the Japanese would eat it. <laughs> Mary? Mary? So, but you cut it down really thin, you cut it at an angle, right? And you can see it, all right? So what I'm going to do is just get another tray here. Thank you. All right, and we're going to cook these three pieces of meat, yeah? And we're going to put these ones away. And then what we do is we hang the meat, for instance, this is hung for uh, 14 days and it a, a really low humidity, or a really high humidity room. So therefore, what, what's really important about hanging meat is time, temperature, and moisture. There are the three things you have to take into consideration. No, we hung it in a key pack, right? So they were very good to me because an animal like this, it was a ton and a quarter weight. So, and you have to get it uh, processed in a recognized place. So there were, it's a very few places that can handle an animal like that, you know? All right. So we're going to cook this down here. And the thing is with the loin, like if you think about the loin, where does the loin come from? It comes from, we'd say, up here in your body. So you use your body as where the animal is. Like a saddle is the back of your body, right? The rack is here, you know, rack of lamb. You know, so rack of lamb is five ribs, so just to here, all right? So we're going to cook these two pieces and just cut this down slightly. We'll leave that here. And the reason I'm not going to marinate it because I want you to taste it as it is, right? And then the next day after this, then we're going to do pasta, yeah? All right? We're going to season uh, here. We're going to go over to this side now, yeah? It's actually my own, my own. I'm so proud of this, you know? I mean, you can't bet it, hard look. This is mine, and hopefully, if some, somebody with loads of money, you know, going to back me, but it's a project for five years I've been working on, and we have it only in this restaurant and only in the Park Hyatt in Singapore. No. It's my, yes, Irish bread. I'm Irish. Okay, its father is Japanese. So its father come all the way from Japan, and its mother is 100% Irish, and we call it Iru. It means Irish happiness. Yeah. Okay, let's go over here, because I want you to cook this. Okay, we're coming this side now. Sorry, guys. All right, so, okay. All right, when, when, you're, when you're cooking meat, yeah, we have here. So we have the fish stock on now already, all right? Okay, so, yeah, all right. We're going to cook this here. May I just back, rewind. <laughs> uh, Mark, you do me a favor, we put away that meat for me and cover it, yeah? Please, thank you. All right, so when you're seasoning, like season lightly, but see the way you're moving the soil back and forth like this, all right? So the worst thing you can do is like season like that. Why? Because it's only that patch is getting seasoned, right? And then, you know, and then season again, yeah? And season, okay? And we're going to do this one with no seasoning. So you taste the difference, all right? So one, two, one, two, turn, turn, turn. Now, we have a pan here, a grill pan, and we'll just put a teeny bit of oil on the pan, yeah? All right? So the pan caught fire. So that's not a good, good thing. So we just have to take it out. It's all right. Sorry, my mistake, yeah? All right, and the spatula. Yeah. All right, so it means it's hot, yeah? And I do that on purpose because why? Because I want cleaning it. So put salt in it now. Yeah, so it takes all the dirt off it, you know, like the grill and the grain, you know. Because like you know, you when you wash your face and you use that grain. Yeah. So. It's exfoliate. Uh, what's it called? An exfoliator. An exfoliator. This is a pan exfoliator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. So we, that's actually beauty treatment for the pan, yeah? But just look at it, look at it, 
you know, it's come off, you know, it's come off itself, you know? It's just all the pores in your skin. Does it have to be like really hot like that to do that? It's better to do it like that when it's hot because what's happening is that all the, all, we say, the little pieces that the grains are coming loose and they're easier to move. Like when we're cleaning the range, for instance, it's better when it's hot because then you put water, vinegar, and elbow grease are the three main ingredients. And then you work it, and then you get like this, and this should be the same. No? So you clean this three times a day, so it's like a piano. You work the piano to make sure it's in, right? So you see the way it's all. Yeah. yeah. Cheap tablecloths? Sold. Oh, sold. Oh, that word we don't use. What, you know, uh, yeah, you can buy cheap table salt, yes. There are a lot of places. For cleaning, yeah. 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 And for instance, like if you do, even if you use a rock, like a salt for uh, marinating in something, yeah. and you can use that as well, you know? But see now, look at the difference in the pan, yeah. you know? Okay, all right. So now, put it back on. And oh, these are stuck here now. See, they start to stuck there, all right? So we put that in here at the back. And then I'll just put, sorry, I'll be able to wait 30 seconds, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now you see the pan is, you know, nice and clean now. And you just one more. Is that olive oil? And that takes a little bit out of it. Sunflower oil, you know? Oil. Yeah. And then we go, because the olive oil, you don't heat, if you mix in olive oil, you just mix the olive oil and sunflower oil together, you know? So it doesn't get too hot, right? So I'm going to put a little here, just rub it, and you can see just slightly. Yeah, yeah. Just because I don't want to stick, that's all really, you know? All right, one more thing I've got, because my spatula is out of my pocket. Yes, Mark, will you do me a favor? I would just clean up there for me. I need a spatula in somebody's pocket. Spatula, thanks, sorry. Okay, so we have it here. And then listen to that sound. If you don't have that sound, it's not going to do anything for you. Right? And then this one for Bernie. She likes it well done. Yeah? All right. So the thing is that there's nothing wrong with doing things well done. But the biggest thing is that if you're doing something well done, is that all the moistures are moving in really quickly and it gets really tense. And to me, I don't care if it's the best, most expensive piece of meat in the world. And if it's tough, it's no good. You know what I mean? So the reason, if you do stuff well done, if, if you do it slowly and well done, you know, like it goes through th three stages, like one rare, so the juices are just starting to push together. Medium, they push more in. Well done, push more in and maybe, but I think it needs to go more than well done to go to the other side where it goes tender again. You know? So you put this down like this, yeah? And then move it, so see the way nice color in it, yeah? This is the one we didn't season, yeah? Was it? And then you can tell if you season it or not, you know? And the thing is that, you know, people say, you know, your fingers are disgusting, but really your hands are probably cleaner than most utensils. And we wash our hands maybe a million times a day, you know? And you can tell when you lick your fingers, tell whether it's seasoned or not. Because the thing is that when you're doing, how do you know, for instance, a customer, whether it's, uh, see, and everywhere here you see there's fridges, so everywhere. So they're all set to different temperatures, yeah? The red are really close, yeah? Just pass me, uh, and the, Mark, pass me tray knives over there, please. Thank you. Uh, we're going to do pasta. How are we doing for time? Five to 11. That's not bad, actually. Huh? Ha any questions? Huh? OK. All right. Now just put your finger on it so you can taste it, yeah? Go, go. Yeah, I'm cooking the loin, the fillet, and the three different parts. Yeah, like, no, it won't burn you. Like, if you put it gently down and taste it. Your, um, you know, like rare or yeah, I'm, oh, these are all cooked rare, and except for burning. It's well done. <laughs> no? So that's why I cook this like this one. So I don't have to cook it too long. Like, the most important thing you remember I was saying is that if you're doing something well done, is make sure that you know you, you cut it right and then you, it's still tender. Because no point in giving it to her if it's well done and it's tough and she said that's crap. You excuse the language, yeah? Okay. And do you eat well done as well? Yeah, well done? I'll see the face and it's like, oh my God, yeah? Huh? 
Well, what happened, like when you're cooking this, for instance, right, for about seven minutes, because of this size, will be well done, right? This, obviously, two minutes. It's about two minutes since I started this, so it's well done. When you, okay, we just put these, or here's an example, right? For just for instance, like these are rare, right? This one is medium and this one is well done, okay? So if you touch, you start off with this one. Touch, 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 yeah? Touch it, touch it, touch it. Go and then hop. Yeah. Yeah? You see the voice rises when she gets better, because it's, it's well done, you know? So this one, you know, and the thing is that there, There. See, low juice, and all it is the difference is all it is is that you don't like juices. That's what. Well, like if I was to blindfold you and got you to eat it, you'd probably think, wow, you know, that's different, yeah. So, yeah. Just have a taste. I'll give you a teeny weeny bit, you know. No. Yeah, but that's the flank, all right? So the sirloin is here. And then now, let me taste it. Mm. Right, so now I want you to taste this one. Huh? Much more tender. Most more tender. But the flavor is slightly sweet, you know? That's what's really interesting about it, you know? <laughs> huh? Which one do you prefer? That one. The well done? All right, okay, sorry. Try it. Do you want a piece? One piece? <laughs> We've been eating this all week, testing it out, you know? But it's really nice, yeah? It's good. Okay. And then the, the best way to serve this is actually do very little with it. So what we do is we do it with horseradish because we have here, and we'll do it for, here this is called uh, holy water. All right? So Ishkabaha. And we make it with horseradish. And we serve it with horseradish and pea pure or uh, parsley puree and the horseradish grated. And so we serve uh, the Ishkabaha on the side, you know? You know Ishkabaha? Holy water. Yeah. Okay, isn't it nice? And now the fat. See, you know the way you say it's fatty. Yep. But I think it's important to taste the fat, you know? There. Obviously, you won't taste fat, will you? No. It's well done fat. Okay. <laughs> but it's really nice flavor, isn't it? Yeah. yeah? All right. Okay, next, uh, it's 11 o'clock. Okay, so time is ticking. Okay, guys. You want some? <laughs> Neve here. It's a well done piece, Neve, for you, yeah? Here, we pass this, Neve. Here. Kwan? Killian? Yeah. Staff lunch, yeah. Uh, Mark, um, Alan, dear. Okay, next.